Welcome to our latest video on the topic of electroplating and the purification of copper. This video is suitable for GCSE students. By the end of this video lesson, you should be able to explain the meaning of the term electroplating and be able to describe how to carry out an electroplating experiment. You should also understand that electrolysis can be used to purify a metal and be able to describe how copper can be purified using this technique. And finally, you should be able to write electrode equations to describe what is happening at each electrode during the purification of copper. Now, in our previous lessons, we have discovered that electrolysis can be used to extract metals from metal ores. For example, aluminium is extracted from its ore using electrolysis. And it can also be used to produce important chemicals such as hydrogen, chlorine, sodium hydroxide and oxygen. And in previous lessons we've looked at the electrolysis of sodium chloride solution and discovered that you can produce hydrogen, chlorine and sodium hydroxide. And we've also looked at the electrolysis of water and discovered that we can produce hydrogen and oxygen gas in this process. Now in this video lesson we're going to look at two more uses of electrolysis. We're going to look at electroplating and the purification of metals. Now let's first start with electroplating. Electroplating is the process of coating an object, usually a metal, with a thin layer of a different metal using electrolysis. And electroplating is a useful way of protecting a metal from corrosion. For example, steel is often electroplated with a layer of nickel, chromium or gold to stop it rusting. And electroplating also makes an object look more attractive. For example, you may have jewellery that is silver plated or kettles that are copper plated to make them more attractive and easier on the eye. Now to carry out an electroplating experiment, I would need a power supply, a source of electricity. I would need electrodes that dip into a solution of an ionic compound. Now this solution must contain the metal that I want to plate my object with. So for example, if I want to plate an object with copper, the solution must be a copper compound. So for example, copper nitrate or copper sulfate. And I need connecting wires to link the power supply to the electrodes and the object that I want to plate. Now if I want to do electroplate a key or a coin, this object would be the negative electrode because metals form at the negative electrode. Now the positive electrode or anode could either be made out of graphite, carbon, which is a good conductor of electricity, or could be made out of the metal that I'm going to plate my object with. So for example, if I'm going to plate my key or my coin with copper, the positive electrode could be a piece of copper. If I was going to plate it with nickel, it could be a piece of nickel. Now these electrodes dip into a solution of a metal compound. And I have to use a metal compound that contains the metal that I'm going to plate my objects with. So if I'm going to plate my key with nickel, I would need a compound such as nickel sulfate or nickel nitrate. If I was going to plate it with silver, I would probably use silver nitrate. If I was going to plate it with copper, my compound would be something like copper sulfate or copper nitrate. And this compound that we're going to break down using electricity is called an electrolyte. Now this short video clip from Cleaps shows an electroplating experiment in action. We have a piece of copper metal which is the negative electrode and this is going to be plated by zinc because we put zinc as a positive electrode and during this electroplating experiment the copper metal gets coated with a thin layer of grey zinc metal. Now the electrolyte here would have to be a compound containing zinc so we would use something like zinc sulfate. And after this experiment is completed, we can see that we have a thin layer 
of grey zinc coating the copper metal. Now in the next section of this video we're going to look at how metals can be purified using electrolysis and the example that we're going to use is copper. Now copper is extracted from its ore by heating with carbon and when copper forms it's not that pure. Now copper has lots of uses however one of its major uses is in electrical wiring. Now this use depends on the copper being very pure. So electrolysis is used to purify the copper. Now this slide shows the apparatus you would use to purify copper. Now in this experiment a piece of impure copper is used as the positive electrode and a pure piece of copper is used as the negative electrode and these electrodes are connected up to a power supply and they dip in a solution that contains a copper compound such as copper sulfate. Now the impure copper which is the positive electrode, loses electrons to form copper ions and these dissolve in the solution. Now my electrode equation for what's taking place at the positive electrode is Cu goes to Cu2 plus plus two electrons. Now that is oxidation, a loss of electrons. Now these Cu2 plus ions which dissolve in the solution are then attracted to the negative electrode and that's called the cathode. Now our cathode is a piece of pure copper and when the Cu2 plus ions are attracted to the negative electrode they gain electrons to form copper metal so they're forming new copper and copper forms at this negative electrode. So the electrode grows in size. Now our electrode equation for what's taking place at the cathode is simply Cu2 plus plus two electrons goes to Cu. Now this is the exact reverse of what's happening at the anode. Now this process that's taking place at the cathode is reduction because the copper 2 plus ions are gaining electrons to form copper. Now our anode, which is an impure piece of copper, gets smaller during this process because copper changes to copper 2 plus ions and these dissolve in solution. And the impurities fall to the bottom of the beaker as the positive electrode just dissolves away. Now if you carried out this experiment you could record the mass of each electrode before the electrolysis experiment and after the electrolysis experiment had finished. And if you did this you would find that the anode reduced in mass after this experiment. And this is because the copper changes to copper 2 plus ions and these dissolve in the solution and any impurities fall to the bottom of the beaker. Now your cathode would gain in mass because new copper would just form on this cathode. So now we're going to test your understanding of electroplating and the purification of copper with some practice questions. So here's the first practice question. So we have a diagram showing the apparatus we would use to purify copper. And question A is asking you to describe what you would see happening at the negative electrode. Question B is asking you to explain how a copper ion becomes a copper atom at the negative electrode. And question C is asking you to describe what happens to the size of the positive electrode during this process. Pause the video, have a go at this question and then we'll go for the answers.
So now let's go for the answers to question one. So at the negative electrode, you would see orange or red-brown solid forming at the electrode. And this would cause the negative electrode to get bigger in size. One mark for that. Now, the next part of the question is asking you to explain how copper 2 plus ions become copper atoms at this electrode. So you need to say that they gain electrons to form copper. Now, if somebody wrote the electrode equation, Cu2 plus plus two electrons goes to Cu, I would also give you one mark for that because you are explaining that the copper two plus ions are gaining electrons. Now, the last part of the question is asking you what happens to the size of the positive electrode during this process? Well, the size decreases. So here's the second question we'd like you to have a go at. So question 2a is asking why copper 2 plus ions moves towards the cathode. And question 2a part 2 is asking you to complete and balance the following electrode equation that shows how copper forms at the cathode. So we'd like you to read through this question, pause the video and have a go at it. And then we'll look at question 2b. So here's the second part of question two. So we're going to read the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go through the answers. So now let's go for the answers to question two. So the reason that copper two plus ions move towards the cathode is the fact that copper ions, Cu two plus ions, are positively charged, one mark for that, and therefore they're attracted to the oppositely charged or negative electrode. So if you said copper ions are positive, you get a mark for that. And if you said they're attracted to the oppositely charged electrode or the negative electrode, you get the second mark. Now for the next question, you had to complete and balance the following electrode equation to show how copper forms at the cathode. So it is Cu2 plus plus two electrons goes to Cu. And if you've got that right, you get one mark. So now let's go for the answers to question 2b. Now this question has a bit of numeracy in it, and this is very common for the WJC exams. So the first part of this question is asking you to work out the mean mass of copper deposited on the cathode at five volts. Now, to answer this question, you have to ignore the anomalous result, okay? And that's 0 0.29. So you have to discount that because 0 0.29 is too far away from the other results at five volts. So you have 0 0.19 grams and 0 0.21 grams. You add them together, you divide by two to find the mean value, which is 0 0.20 grams. So for 2b part two, you're asked to calculate the percentage error of the unreliable result at five volts. Now they give you the formula for this. It's the difference between this unreliable result and the mean divided by the mean result times 100. So it's 0 0.29 minus 0 0.20 gives you 0 0.09. You divide that by the mean result, 0 0.20, and you times by 100. And that gives you a percentage error of 45%. And if you got that right, you get one mark. So now have a go at question three. So Aisha wants to electroplate a metal kettle with copper and this question is asking you to suggest what Aisha would use for the following a the anode b the cathode and c the electrolyte pause the video have a go at the question and then we'll go for the answers so now let's go for the answers to question three so if Aisha wants to electroplate a kettle with copper for the anode, you could use a carbon or graphite electrode, or you could use the metal being used to plate the kettle, so a piece of copper. One mark for that. For part B, the cathode would be the object being plated, so the kettle, one mark for that. And for part C, the electrolyte would be a compound containing the plated metal, so that could be something like copper sulfate, or it could be copper nitrate solution. And there's one mark for that. So that concludes our video lesson. So after watching this video, you should now be able to explain the meaning of the term electroplating 
and be able to describe how to carry out an electroplating experiment. You should also be able to understand that electrolysis can be used to purify metal and be able to describe how copper can be purified using this technique. And finally, you should be able to write electrode equations to describe what is happening at each electrode during the purification of copper. So that concludes our video. Please check out our YouTube channel, Dr. Rowe Chemistry, and our Twitter site, which contains lots of chemistry information and links, at Radichemistry.